<clears throat> so, we meet again. Hey, you guys. Uh, we'll get started in the usual five minutes, which is uh, <clears throat> 2 o'clock East Coast time. In the meantime, I'll just say hi to a few people and uh, hope everybody's having a good time today. <clears throat> hi, Angelina in Illinois. Uh, and the Corleys and uh, Ian and Erica haven't missed one yet. Okay, neither have I. Co well, almost. Cody and Philip. Hi, so good, good to see you all. Miriam is here. Yes. And the Phillips kids in Alabama, they always show up. Lucas in Kentucky, hi. And Philip, I already said Philip, okay, that's good. Xavier, hi Xavier, how you doing? Uh, Bradley's here, okay. Some unfamiliar names, I like that. Jack and John are here. Rashid and Inej are here, good to see you. Uh, wow, Gabe and Penelope, Penelope are in Germany, cool. Uh, the Maslowski kids are here, and Evan from Atlanta is here. Great. Uh, Liam and Amelia from Minnesota. <clears throat> Nora and Eloise in New Jersey. 70 people are here. Bennett's here. Billy's here. Um, Billy Sickles, of course, is here from Washington. Uh, Gianluca and Matteo, glad to see you. And uh, uh, Haley and Liliana in California. Uh, Colin and Cora, great. Call your friends, your relatives, your cousins, your nephews, your aunts, whatever. Laney and Ben are, are here. Uh, Brooke from California, hi there. Uh, Grant in Virginia always is always welcome. Um, somebody said their first one is here, okay. William and Abby and Lucy uh, hasn't missed a day. Great, Scarlett in California, uh, great. And Billy Bob, there's almost 100 of us here in the room. There's still room for more. Raina in Natick, Massachusetts. The Bell kids are here. And so is Charlie in Nebraska. We have about uh, three minutes to go. Three minutes until two o'clock. Hey, Aaron and Ginny. Uh, two o'clock and Molly in Evanston, Illinois. Um, we'll be started really soon. Evan and Scar uh, Scarlett. I think I said hi to Scarlett already. Srikar from India. Hi. Uh, and uh, Ellen in uh, Massachusetts. Jolie. Jolie Alex. Uh, Aiden and Connor say hi. I say hi back. Kira in Mississippi. Okay. Cuckoo Kachu. <laughs> uh, the Ridiculous Rileys are here. And Irene and Evelyn in New Jersey. We'll get started in, oh, about two minutes or so. Noel and Declan say hi. Lyra, glad to see it. Glad, glad to see you, Lyra. Uh, Emily and uh, Natalie. Okay. And Kobe in South Dakota. Okay, CJ, Iowa, thanks for laughing with me. Uh, Kansu and Kanan, uh, Alex and Zach in New Jersey, and uh, I see you all out there. Rishi is there. Uh, Rohan, uh, Brandon from New York, and the Jones kids in Alabama. Great. Madison from SI, Staten Island, I guess. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh, Francesco from Glenhead, New York. We got about a minute and a half to go. Uh, before we get started, I can get rid of this. I can take a sip of my water. Hey, Henry in Kentucky, and Jay and Maya in Virginia. <sighs> okay, and the Markwood crew in Florida, they're always here. We've gonna, got one minute to go. Kaylee, if you want to say hello, this is your chance, because I won't be looking after I get started. Alex and Elaine from Ontario, and uh, where did I get my shirt? Go to the My Weird School shop on my website. You can get a shirt like this. Ben, Kavi, and Ashwin in New Jersey, and Calvin, Dean, and Elaine in Texas. Uh, we've got less than a minute to go. It's almost go time, baby. Vanya, hi. Uh, Antonia and Rachel in Long Island. And Emmett in Wisconsin. We got about a half a minute to go. Tyler, hi. Kin uh, uh, Criche, uh, Ryan in Massachusetts is here. Uh, the Mitzels from Iowa. We got about less than a minute to go. Yes, Staten Island. Thank you, SI West Staten Island. Naomi and, and uh, Emily and uh, Gan Gutman. Okay, whoever that is. <laughs> uh, Oliver in Philly. We have, ooh, 10 seconds to go. Excuse me. Uh, let's count them down. Set five, four, five, four, three, two, one. It's go time, baby. Hi. 
Dan Gutman here. I'm the guy who writes the uh, My Weird School series and lots of other books for kids too. And welcome to number 81 of My Weird Read Aloud. Yes, 81, and we're going towards 100. Let's start right off the bat with our question of the week, a question of the day, I should say, which is from Clark in Iowa. And Clark asks, uh, what's your favorite Beatles song? Oh, thanks for asking, Clark. And what a coincidence, because today is Ringo Starr's birthday. The drummer of the Beatles, tur Beatles turns 80 years old today. Happy birthday to Ringo. Oh, that's a tough question, Clark. I'm telling you, I love the Beatles, as many of you know, and uh, I generally like the fast songs best, like like Day Tripper and Back in the USSR and I Saw Her Standing There are a few of my real big favorites, but I think one of my favorites is really soft and uh, in fact Ringo didn't even play on it. Uh, in fact, uh, three of the Beatles didn't play on it. It's a, it's a solo McCartney song and I think I'll play it for you. What do you say? Okay. It goes like this. I'm not going to sing it, I'm just going to play it and you'll see if you know what it is. Ready? You know that song? If you don't, ask your grandparents, okay? All right, enough of that. Happy birthday, Ringo. Uh, let's get to our, our book of the week, which of course is Mr. Cooper is Super. And if you were following us yesterday, you know that, uh, well, the book starts with an alien spaceship landing in the playground, which freaks everybody out, including the teacher, Mr. Granite. Everybody's going nuts. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, so um, so the, the spaceship lands, and a ramp comes down off the spaceship, and and somebody comes out. And yesterday, I wouldn't tell you who it was. I I made you wait. I said, Nana and a boo boo. I'm not telling you who comes out. And uh, that's called a cliffhanger. And so today, I said, uh, I'll tell you in the next chapter. And so now I'm going to tell you in the next chapter. Okay. And it's chapter three, and it's titled, Mr. Granite is from another planet. Okay? All right, so, you guys ready? Gather around your big screen TV, your laptop, your tablet, your smartphone, whatever it is. Let's do it. <clears throat> it was Mr. Granite! <laughs> well, it wasn't our Mr. Granite, because he was standing right next to us. But the alien who came down the ramp of the spaceship looked just like Mr. Granite. Our teacher, Mr. Granite, just stood there with a look of wonder on his face. Who are you? We all asked the alien who looked just like Mr. Granite. I am Mr. Granite, said the alien. You can't be Mr. Granite, said Andrea. Mr. Granite is our teacher. And he's standing right here. I am Mr. Granite, repeated the alien, who looked just like Mr. Granite. And you'll never believe in a million hundred years what happened next. Ten more aliens climbed out of the spaceship and came down the ramp. And every one of them looked just like Mr. Granite. And here's Jim's picture of <laughs> all the aliens coming down the ramp of the spaceship. <laughs> and they all look like Mr. Granite. Who are you guys, we all asked. I am Mr. Granite. I am Mr. Granite. I am Mr. Granite. I am Mr. Granite. In case you were wondering, all the aliens were saying, I am Mr. Granite. That was weird. Will the real Mr. Granite please stand up, I asked. They're all the real Mr. Granite, said our teacher, Mr. Granite. They have come from my home planet, Etinarg. Yes, said the first alien. Everybody on Etinarg is named Mr. Granite. Etinarg is granite spelled backward. 
Wow, a whole planet filled with guys named Mr. Granite? That must get confusing. I guess when somebody on Etinard calls out, hey, Mr. Granite, everybody turns around. So all the men on your planet look exactly the same, asked Ryan. Yes, said Mr. Granite, and so do all the women. What? Even the women look like Mr. Granite? In fact, said one of the alien Mr. Granites, half of us are women. Eek! How do they tell the difference between men and women? I didn't want to know. Our teacher, Mr. Granite, went over and hugged one of the alien Mr. Granites. Then all of the other Mr. Granites went over to hug our Mr. Granite. Everybody was hugging everybody else. Mr. Granite, said Mr. Granite. Mr. Granite, said the alien who looked just like Mr. Granite. Mr. Granite, Mr. Granite, Mr. Granite. All the Mr. Granites were hugging each other and crying because they hadn't seen our Mr. Granite in so long. It was like a meeting of Elvis impersonators, except they looked like Mr. Granite instead of Elvis. Here's Jim's picture of <laughs> all the Mr. Granites <laughs> gathering outside and hugging each other outside the spaceship. Did the Earthlings harm you in any way? One of the Mr. Granites asked our Mr. Granite. No, Mr. Granite told Mr. Granite. They are my students and they were good to me. On Earth, we're very well behaved, said Andrea, who's such a brown noser that she'll even kiss up to aliens from other planets. What about the larger Earthlings? Asked one of the Mr. Granites. They have been very kind to me, said Mr. Granite. The principal of the school even gave me a key to the teacher's lounge. The teacher's lounge, it, lounge is a magical secret place where they have hot tubs, back rubs, and all the ice cream and candy you can eat. Are you going to take over the world and turn us into flesh-eating robots? I asked one of the Mr. Granites. <clears throat> I saw that in a movie once. It was cool. No, said all the Mr. Granites. Are you going to turn us into killer zombie robot slaves? Asked Michael. No, said all the Mr. Granites. Then why are you here? Asked Alexia. We have come to... The alien Mr. Granite didn't have the time to finish his sentence because at that very moment, our principal, Mr. Klutz, came running out into the playground. And here's Mr. Klutz running out into the playground. Like the sound effect? Okay. He has no hair at all. I mean none. His head is so shiny, it squeaks. What's the meaning of this? Asked Mr. Klutz. Is this some kind of a joke? <laughs> is this some kind of a joke? No. A joke would be like, what's the difference between a guitar and a fish? You can't tune a fish. Get it? Tuna fish? Tuna fish? Anyway, the point is that Mr. Klutz totally doesn't know what a joke is. These men and women are from the planet Etinarg, Andrea told Mr. Klutz. Their names are Mr. Granite. I figured that, said Mr. Klutz. They all look just like our Mr. Granite. To what do, I, to what do we owe the pleasure of your company, Mr. Granite? That's grown-up talk for, what are you doing here? We have a very important mission, said one of the alien Mr. Granites. We have come to take your Mr. Granite home with us to Etinarg. What? All right, that's the end of chapter three. Let's do chapter four, which is titled, Saying Goodbye is Sad. The alien Mr. Granites were going to take over, I'm sorry, start again. The alien Mr. Granites were going to take our Mr. Granite away. Everybody started yelling and screaming and freaking out. No, don't go. As much as I hate to use the L word, we all love Mr. Granite. We didn't want him to leave. Mr. Granite has been teaching at our school for a long time, said Mr. Klutz to the aliens. Why are you suddenly showing up now? Good question. 
That's why Mr. Klutz is the principal. We apologize for our lateness, said one of the Mr. Granites. Etenarg is a hundred million light years away from Earth. It took us a long time to get here. And besides, we got stuck in traffic. He was definitely lying about that. I, mean, I don't even think they have traffic in outer space. Whenever my parents are late for anything, they always say they were stuck in traffic. That's the first rule of being a grown-up. Here's uh, Jim's picture of a, 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 a traffic jam in outer space. I wondered if the alien Mr. Granites were going to peel off their faces. Aliens are always peeling off their faces in movies. That's the first rule of being an alien. And peeling off your face is cool. I wish I could peel off my face. Are you going to peel your faces off? I asked the Mr. Granites. Don't mind if I do, they all replied. The alien Mr. Granites reached up to the tops of their heads with both hands. All the girls screamed. I covered my eyes with my hands. I wanted to see the Mr. Granites peel off their faces, but at the same time, I didn't want to see what was underneath. What if it was scary? So I covered my eyes, but I opened my fingers so I could look between them. All the Mr. Granites pulled at the top of their heads. The heads opened up like pistachio nuts. Then they peeled their entire faces off. It was awesome. And you'll never believe in a million hundred years what the Mr. Granites looked like underneath their faces. They looked exactly the same. That was refreshing, said one of the Mr. Granites as he threw his old face off to the side. Hey, Alexia said. Those faces look just like the ones you peeled off. It never hurts to have an extra face, said one of the Mr. Granites. And here's Jim's picture of some of the Mr. Granites peeling their Mr. Granite faces off to reveal that they look just like Mr. Granite. <laughs> Even though the peeled off faces looked exactly the same as their regular faces, it was still pretty cool. It's not every day you get to see a bunch of aliens peel their faces off. All the Mr. Granites started hugging and crying again. It was hard to tell which of the Mr. Granites was ours because they all looked the same. I didn't think you would ever come for me, said Mr. Granite. We never forgot about you, Mr. Granite, said one of the Mr. Granites. We heard that you built a spaceship, said another of the Mr. Granites. Yes, said our Mr. Granite, but a cow bumped into it when I was taking off. I almost died. That won't happen this time, Mr. Granite said of one, to one of the other Mr. Granites. We must leave now before any more cows come around. Everybody started yelling and sobbing and freaking out. Don't leave us, Mr. Granite, begged Alexia. Please, 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 we all begged. Saying please over and over and over again usually works with grown-ups, at least human grown-ups. I have enjoyed my time on Earth as your third grade teacher, said Mr. Granite, but Etenarg is my home. Now I must return to my own planet. Everybody was moaning and groaning and freaking out. Mr. Klutz, can't you do something, asked Emily. You're the principal. Yeah, we all said. Mr. Klutz held up his hand and made a peace sign, which means shut up. Then he took a step forward to shake Mr. Granite's hand. You are a great teacher, Mr. Granite, he said. We will miss you here at Ella Mentry School. I'm not a teacher, said Mr. Granite. You must mean the other Mr. Granite. Oh, yes, said Mr. Klutz. I'm sorry. It's very confusing when you all look alike. No worries, said all the other Mr. Granites. They started moving up the ramp to go back inside their spaceship. The Mr. Granite, who was our teacher, went over to Mr. Klutz and they hugged. We borrowed Mr. Granite from the good people of Etenarg, Mr. Klutz told us. But now we must return him. When you borrow something, you should always return it. I really enjoyed working at elementary school, Mr. Granite said. Leaving here makes me feel sad. Everybody was choked up. Even Mr. Klutz looked like he was going to cry. 
Mr. Granite gathered all the kids in our class around him for a group hug. And here's Jim's picture of, of uh, all the kids hugging, giving a hug, one last hug to Mr. Granite before he goes back to his uh, home planet. Everybody's sad. I'm going to miss you kids more than anything else, he said, tears in his eyes. We're going to miss you too, Mr. Granite, we all said. When I get home, said Mr. Granite, I'm going to name my ethnarch friends AJ, Andrea, Ryan, Emily, Michael, Alexia, and Neil. We were all sobbing and blubbering and blowing our noses into tissues. Well, only one nose per person. It would be weird to blow two noses. I hope you kids will remember what I, taught, what I told you this year, said Mr. Granite. I thought back and remembered some of the things Mr. Granite had told me during the year. I before E, except after C. Sit down. Be quiet. Stop talking. Tie your sneakers. Stop bothering Andrea. Stop talking. Stop picking your nose. No, you can't go to the boys' room now. Where's your homework? Stop talking. Go to the principal's office. Stop making armpit farts. Ah, uh, those were the good old days. Mr. Granite pulled himself away from us and climbed into the spaceship with all the other Mr. Granites. The ramp slid up into the ship. A few minutes later, the countdown began. Ten, nine, eight. Dark smoke started coming out of the spaceship. Seven, six, five. I could hear that weird humming sound. Four, three, two. Colored lights started flashing. One. Just before the spaceship was about to take off, a window opened up. Mr. Granite poked his head out of the window and shouted to us, Turn to page 23 in your math books. But he never had the chance to finish his sentence. Okay, that's chapter four. We're going to do chapter five tomorrow. Hey, did you notice that the title character, Mr. Cooper, <laughs> hasn't even shown up yet? Okay, but we'll, we'll see him tomorrow, chapter five. Okay, so uh, it's time for our joke of, the, uh, a joke of the day, which comes from Emily and Natalie in Columbus, Ohio. Yes, and their joke is, uh, how did the farmer find his wife? Hmm? How did the farmer find his wife? Give up? <clears throat> he tracked her down. <laughs> Get it? Tracked her down? All right, you can blame that one on Emily and Natalie. All right, it's time for you guys to get off the couch, stop staring at screens, and thank Josh Solzman and Ryan Cunningham for our theme song. You know it, you love it, let's do it, okay? Man, oh man, is that man nuts! Okay, you guys, see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Wash your hands like crazy and read like crazy too, okay?